I would think that Tom Cruise would take a month and it would be very difficult. And I would think that the only thing that could get him to, to even consider sitting through that would be maybe if he fell madly in love with some woman like he did with Penelope Cruz it seems to me. Hmm. And at that point, Penelope Cruz decides to stage an intervention. If there was a perfect universal alignment and you could take him back to that feeling of being shell-shocked, like somehow, you know, someone close to him links up with you for an intervention you gain his trust somehow. Maybe he's like, all right, before we do this, you have to come on a crazy stunt. Like, let's do a halo jump first so I can see what you're made of. And you go on a stunt with Tom Cruise and then you're in a you're in a room with him after and you're kind of like processing and you're talking to him and you like get him to think about like, do you remember that day when you were, uh, you know, allegedly th- the story that happened where he just had this feeling of like, are you kidding me? Like, this is it after all these years. Like if you could make him sit in that for a little bit, do you think there's a way where you hypothetically could get him to start to unravel, like almost like a week long intervention like you did with the other guy? Or do you think just because he has so much emotional investment in it, he's, he's, he's gone. I I have, I would think that Tom Cruise would take a month, a month, and it would be a very hard, hard uh, pull, and it would be very difficult. And I would think that the only thing that could get him to to even consider sitting through that would be maybe if he fell madly in love with some woman like he did with Penelope Cruz it seems to me. Hmm. And at that point, Penelope Cruz decides to stage an intervention. And uh, because he loves her, she says, well, if you love me, if you care about me, will you just listen? Would you be willing to just listen? Because if Scientology really does have all the answers, and if it is the truth, then nothing this guy could say, or nothing I can say, or anybody could say, could dissuade you, but would you be willing, because you love me, to just give the time out to listen? And mm-hmm. I would think the only thing that could yeah. motivate him was if he was head over heels in love and the woman said, look, you know, I, I love you, but I, I do not like Scientology. And it's a part of you that I'm having a problem yeah. with. And are you willing to talk it through? And, and my thinking is like this. This would be a way I would sell it to somebody like Tom Cruise or that someone could sell it to him, maybe, is they would say, look, you're an OT7, OT8. You know everything. You know David Miscavige personally. You, you've, you've been to, to Clearwater, to the superpower, you know, place. You, you've, you know everything. You've been a Scientologist since you were a young guy and you're 60. So you've been all in for what? Almost like, you know, maybe 40 years. So this guy, he's, he's, he doesn't have your knowledge of Scientology. He has some knowledge. And I'm here and we have some other yeah. people here. And would you be willing to talk this through with me in, the, in an effort to just give, me, give this guy equal time? You'll explain to me yeah. why Scientology is for me and why I should like it. And he'll explain why he thinks it's a problem. And let's see where we end up. Mm-hmm. Would you be willing to do that? And I think the only way Tom Cruise would be willing to do that is if he were head over heels in love with uh, a woman and he just thought he would die without her and that he would be willing not to leave, but just to listen with the idea in his mind that there's nothing that they could possibly say that would that would dissuade yeah. me from being fully committed to Scientology. Yeah. I mean, if he did it that would be that I mean, that would be absolutely amazing. And you know, I, I tend to be more optimistic, so I think there's always a chance. And Tom Tom Cruise is such a good 
like he's so good at what he does. Like I've heard all the things behind the scenes where he will obsess over oh, a stunt yeah. for a year, like a year straight. He'll just learn to to halo jump or hold his breath underwater for five minutes. And like they'll plan the movie, they'll plan Mission Impossible around the stunt. Like he'll come in and say, I'm doing this stunt. I, well, I'm going to fly a helicopter. I'm going to be in a plane. Like we need to create the movie around this. And he just has like this insane discipline about making movies so maybe if his identity of actor is a slightly above his identity of scientologist maybe during the deep programming he'll be like all right maybe scientology is bullshit like let's make a movie about this deep programming though and he just turns to you he's like you can get any you can get anyone to play you in this movie you want like i'll play me and then we'll have uh We'll turn this well, into that a movie would be somehow. A sma- that could be potentially <laughs> one of his greatest hits. Uh, and if yeah. you watch him in uh, Magnolia, when he plays really kind of a cult leader, he plays this seminar guru that uh, is expounding a philosophy about how to get women, how mm. to get women, and it, he is mm. incredible in this role. So he is capable of playing a cult leader, that's for sure. And uh, that's why he was nominated for Best Supporting Actor for that part. Yeah. And and he, on the flip side, when he did uh, Born on the Fourth, he played, you know, kind of a victim of indoctrination who broke through the indoctrination mm. to reclaim his sense of individuality, his sense of his life. And yeah. he became a very angry uh you know uh protester activist because of the fact that you know he lost the use of his legs in mm. vietnam and it was a very incredible movie that that he also was nominated for but uh mm. one thing about tom cruise i will tell you is that he got smart after uh war of the worlds cuz if you if you dial back to war of the worlds He came out gangbusters during the uh, cycle of doing interviews and promoting the movie, which was directed by Steven Spielberg, uh, to, you know, it was supposed to be a blockbuster. It it was certainly a good Mm -hmm. movie. It was popular. I I think it made money. But it wasn't this awesome blockbuster like like Mm. E.T., that Spielberg directed. Instead, it was less than that. And I think that maybe Spielberg and others blame Tom Cruise. Uh, Certainly uh, people at at Paramount and Viacom were not happy with him. So when he went out to promote the movie, instead of promoting the movie, as you may recall, he talked a lot about Scientology. He got an argument. He got into a famous argument with Matt Lauer about uh, the use of yeah. uh, of Ritalin or or antidepressants and he just went you know he just went kind of berserk and the the end result yeah. was he got bad press the movie didn't get all of the juice that it should have gotten from his interviews which i think was resented by people attached to the film and then he went through a kind mm-hmm. of i wouldn't call it a downward spiral but he went through kind of a not so good period. And, and, and then what yeah. you notice now with, uh, you know, uh, with uh, Top Gun Maverick and with uh, Mission Impossible and with any interviews that Tom Cruise does, he's back to the old formula, which is I don't talk about Scientology. I mean, he used to have a publicist that is no longer uh, with him. And uh, she would tell people that interviewed Tom Cruise, uh, listen, if you ask him one question about Scientology, the interview is over. He's not going to talk about Scientology in the interview. Yeah. And and he's back to that formula. So you might be right. Maybe he looks at his acting career and and the films that he works on as taking precedence over Scientology because he certainly isn't promoting Scientology when he does promotion for his movies now. 